if we look at earthquake counts now over the last two years, we see that we have bins of earthquakes and these are bin by the week. So you can see the blue lines represent earthquakes per week and there were periods of time where we went relatively high and then we've gone back down to below 100 per week and then we go up to 100 per week and sometimes exceed kind of come back down and so we kind of going up and down but these are in earthquakes per week not earthquakes per day so this is the kind of plot that we would expect to see and if it was earthquakes per day then we're kind of in the same range as prior to 1984 here is the plot by earthquakes per day and you can see that sometimes we get up to in the hundreds but mostly you can see the earthquakes if you were to kind of do a best fit line we're still relatively below 50 earthquakes per day and the most recent period we're actually down in seismicity so so far even though the activity looks fairly active at the summit the earthquake counts aren't quite up to the same types of numbers that we saw prior to 1975 1984. seismicity leading up to the 1975 eruption is shown here with the number of earthquakes per day over the timeline on the x-axis so you could see that seismicity ramped up fairly quickly where over a period of time of quiescence or background as Mauna Loa started to reawakening we had few hundreds of earthquakes per day and prior to the eruption there were a few days where the earthquake counts on a daily basis exceeded a thousand earthquakes and just prior to the outbreak you could see we were in the mid hundreds of earthquakes between three to maybe six or seven hundred earthquakes on a daily basis seismicity leading up to the 1984 eruption is shown in this plot and this is shown as hourly counts in the month of March leading up from March 15th all the way up to the outbreak shown in this arrow. But the activity increased from bursts of earthquakes, intermittent seismal, intermittent activity to a steady stream of earthquakes with many hundreds of earthquakes sustained for weeks prior to the outbreak. This plot shows both of those precursory seismicity for the 1975 and the 1984 eruptions with the number of events shown here and the timeline across. Shallow seismicity is represented by the blue line. Intermedi intermediate seismicity is represented by the red line. And you can see that the intermediate seismicity started to ramp up and then the shallow seismicity and both of them in, in unison ramped up quite rapidly until the eruption happened. And as I stated before, they were, these were many hundreds of events on a per day scale. After the 1975 eruption, seismicity kind of went along relatively slowly, and then it started, intermediate seismicity started to pick up. The shallow seismicity in correspondence also picked up. And then the intermediate seismicity picked up quite dramatically, resulting in a steeper increase in shallow seismicity until the eruption 
occurred. Precursory seismicity before the 1975 eruption, there were populations of earthquakes that occurred, the mid-level or the mid-depth earthquakes at five to 13 kilometer depths happened on the northwest flank of the volcano. And this was an early indication that magma was on the move. And as this population of earthquakes started to increase, progressively seismicity then moved to the shallow edifice around Mukua Veo, the South Caldera region, and the upper Southwest Rift Zone. Preceding the eruption in 1984 was a same pattern of mid-level earthquakes in the Northwest region, progressively seismicity shallowing to the summit caldera, and the South Caldera region, and the upper portion of the Southwest Rift Zone. And all of these magnitudes I'm showing here are greater than 1.6. If we were to show all the magnitudes of the earthquakes, you could take the population that you see on each slide and roughly times it by five. So for all earthquakes, there would be five times more dots on this map. Now, what does the seismicity look like now? Here are the earthquakes in the northwesterly sector. And those that are in orange are earthquakes that represent the same orange in the prior two plots. These are the intermediate depth earthquakes. So orange and yellow are the intermediate depth on this plot. And the shallow earthquakes, instead of being green on this plot, are represented by the red dots. So here's the summit caldera, here's the south caldera of Mauna Loa, and then the upper southwest rift zone. And so the seismicity is starting to look very similar to what preceded the eruptive activity in 1975 and 1984. Now here's a plot of the precursory seismicity in 75. Here's a plot of precursory seismicity prior to the 84 eruption. And here's the current seismicity. And, and like I said, these look relatively the same. Now, there's an important point to make about this magnitude greater than 1.6. Since 1984, we have increased the number of seismic stations across Mauna Loa, but we also have increased the number, I mean, the quality of the instruments that we are using. So the sensitivity of those instruments are much greater than the equipment that was used to note the seismicity prior to that period of time. And in order to compare more appropriately the current seismicity to the old school seismicity, we have to use a cutoff of 1.6 because these instruments weren't as good as detecting the smallest magnitude events and current seismometers are way better at that so if we compared all magnitude events, this right-hand size plot would be like a business, just blanketed with materials of magnitudes even and including less than one. Now, the reason why I put this gray bar here for those who might be wondering is to make these plots comparable in terms of where the seismicity is. So this cutoff is equal to the bottom of both of the prior epochs of time. So in summary, 
what's happening now at Mauna Loa? Well, we have in small degrees of inflation at the summit. We have above background seismicity on the flank. We have slightly above background seismicity in the summit and the upper southwest rift zone, but that's episodic. And what are we missing? We're missing more consistent and persistent seismicity. So instead of having a sawtooth pattern on those daily counts, we'd like to see a gradual ramping up and not have days in which the seismicity drops down to or below 10 earthquakes per day. In as I said, in 1975, we were in the multiple hundreds of earthquakes per day. And in 1984, we were between 50 and 100 earthquakes per day. And so we don't have that yet. So we need more consistency and we need more persistent seismicity. In addition, we need to see increasing rates of deformation a substantial radial pattern and with increasing rates of deformation we should also have corresponding increasing rates of seismicity so what's the take-home message people should be aware of the hazards you should stay informed mauna loa is showing signs of reawakening but an eruption is not imminent. Thank you.